no one's ever done a documentary about Rafer and CK before. Johnson used to call his, his competition with Young the purest of rivalries. On the one hand, they were battling to become the world's greatest athlete. On the other hand, they were best friends. They trained together at UCLA in Los Angeles. They shared the same coach. They used to jokingly call themselves the two-man United Nations. And they remained friends for the rest of their lives. One of the goals of making the film was to introduce both Rayford Johnson and here in Taiwan, especially C.K. Yong, to a new generation of people who don't know much about him. He was the first person from Taiwan to win an Olympic medal. He's the first person with a Chinese surname to ever win an Olympic medal. He was one of the world's greatest athletes. Um, he was a symbol of Taiwan in its battle for greater acceptance, greater legitimacy, greater international space. C.K. Ong had three different opportunities to be engaged with the Olympic Games, and to one degree or another, all of them were shaped by this Taiwan-China competition and rivalry. In 1960, there was this boycott threat. When the Taiwan team marched into the Olympic Stadium for the opening ceremony, the Taiwan team has this placard that says, under protest. And it's the first time in the history of the Olympic Games that there was a open political protest by a team that had ever taken place. Then in 1964 was this episode where a teammate put something in his drink and he didn't win a medal. And then in 1976, when he kind of recovered, he was the coach of the Taiwan team for the Montreal Olympics. They got to Montreal only to discover that the Canadian government had just established diplomatic relations with China. And as a result, again, this issue came up, you can't call yourself a Republic of China. And at that point, the government was, had a different attitude and just said, we're pulling out. Yang was a symbol of Taiwan in its struggle against China. Johnson was an important symbol uh, in the U.S. civil rights movement 64 years now. And look at the headlines. What's in the news? Taiwan-China tensions, Black Lives Matter. So the issues are still out there. And that gives the film a kind of contemporary quality, makes it relevant today. The other interesting part of the production process was the use of animation. Animation is now increasingly a trend in documentary films for when you don't have video. And I think the animations are make, really make the film special because they add a kind of a texture and almost emotional quality to, to the events. If I were in Rome in 1960 as a journalist and had a chance to talk to them. I think the question I would have asked is, tell me how you feel about each other. I just saw you hugging after you were beating each other like this for 10 events. So how do you feel about each other? And in our documentary, Rafer Johnson, you hear him answering that question because what he says was, as good as I felt about winning, I felt bad that my friend had lost. As bad as he felt about not winning, he felt happy that his friend had won. And I think that just tells you so much about, about what the quality of their friendship was like. Their friendship in some ways is emblematic of the kind of people-to-people -people relationship between Taiwan and the states. It sort of transcends all the big politics and so on. Um, and so in a way, it was an opportunity to sort of tell this aspect of Taiwan's story without having to get into all the heavy-duty political stuff that always dominates the news all the time. It's a, it, it humanizes, in a sense, and it shows that these bonds are there and that they're very strong. So I think he does deserve the recognition, and it's my very much my hope that if enough people see the film, that maybe some people will be inspired to try and do something to get him some greater recognition.